Hey guys, it's Victoria with Nutrition by Victoria, and in this video, I'm going to be discussing the six fundamentals for achieving and maintaining optimal health for life. So, what is optimal health? Optimal health is the natural state of the human body. It's always striving for a level of health where everything is functioning efficiently, including organ systems, cell systems, um, etc., and they're functioning at their maximum potential per your genetic makeup. So things that can get in the way of our system functioning optimally or at its best is um, stress. Stress from our environment as well as stress from things that we ingest. So in this video I'm going to be discussing what you can do in order to combat stress from your environment and decrease the things um, that become harmful when ingested in the body. So let's get right into it. The first fundamental for uh, achieving and maintaining optimal health is drinking enough water. The average adult needs about three liters of water, of water a day or about um, one liter per every 50 pounds of body weight. So water is essential for pretty much every cellular process within our body, uh, including energy production, digestion, as well as elimination of toxins, excess body fat, excess protein deposits, um, etc. So water's a vital and essential nutrient that we need to be taking in regularly on a daily basis in order to stay adequately hydrated. Things that cause dehydration um, are taking in stimulants, caffeine, nicotine, recreational drugs, alcohol, consuming a high protein, high fat diet, not consuming enough carbohydrates, um, as well as medications, physical activity, uh, hot, dry climates, um, etc. So, of course, not all of those things are bad, but we do want to be replenishing our nutrient, our, our water stores, in the case that we are um, partaking in any one of those substances or um, living in one a uh, hot, dry climate or exercising a lot. So. In order to adequately assess um, proper hydration status in your body, you can check your urine color. Dark uh, yellow, um, amber, uh, apple juice colored urine indicates uh, dehydration that you need to be drinking more water. And then clear to slightly yellow urine indicates that you're properly hydrated. Other things that you can do to stay properly hydrated on a daily basis besides drinking enough water is consuming a high carbohydrate diet uh, carbohydrates aid adequate um, cell hydration, so you want to be making sure you're eating enough carbohydrates and including plenty of water-rich fruits and vegetables in your diet as well. So moving on to the second pillar, sleep. So we want to be making sure that we're getting enough sleep every night and this looks like about 8 to 12 hours uh, on average for an adult. Uh, sleep aids our system in doing its repair work, recovering from any kind of stress, um, rejuvenating our cells. Uh, it uh, allows for our body to um, unwind and reset, uh, rebalance hormones, um, eliminate toxins. There's a lot of things that happen to your body when you're sleeping. So you go to sleep and it's like plugging into um, of electrical socket in the sense where the body gets recharged. Um, so what can um, happen if you don't get enough sleep is you can suffer from chronic fatigue, depression, anxiety, brain fog, and it opens up the door to all and any stress related illnesses. So you definitely want to make sure that you're sleeping enough um, because all of the benefits of sleep aid in keeping the metabolism functioning efficiently, which translates to optimal health. So that's it for sleep. Um, also, if you're um, able to rest during the day, if you're feeling particularly stressed, closing the eyes, doing some yoga, meditation, just taking some downtime can really help uh, with uh, keeping stress away as well. So the third fundamental is a plant-based diet. So what is a plant-based diet? Plant-based diet is a diet that is composed mainly of plants, ideally 100% plant foods. And these include fruits, vegetables, grains, beans, legumes, nuts, and seeds. So these foods are going uh, ideally eaten whole 
or minimally processed. So we're also eliminating um, not only animal foods from the diet, but we are minimizing our consumption of processed foods, refined oils, chemicals, additives, preservatives, any kind of junk that doesn't need to be in the body. Because when we take in high fat, high protein animal foods, um, as well as processed junky foods, we create stress within the body that needs to be eliminated. And if we're constantly taking in foods that aren't supposed to be in the body and that create stress, we end up creating cellular damage, tissue damage, organ damage, um, depositing fats and proteins and toxins throughout our body where our system uh, is so overburdened that it can't eliminate these things. So what happens when we consume a plant-based diet, um, we're able to get in adequate nutrition in the form of enough carbohydrates, essential fatty acids, essential amino acids, vitamins, minerals, phytonutrients like antioxidants, fiber, water, everything that we need in order to keep our system functioning efficiently. So our body requires plant-based nutrition through a plant-based diet. It doesn't require anything else for health. Everything else is just junk and it junks up our system. So in terms of uh, caloric ratios, we want to be aiming for um, a 70% carbohydrate intake or higher every day, a 20% or lower protein intake per day, and a 15% or 15% or lower fat intake per day. And those are um, macronutrient ratios that you want to strive for. Uh, in terms of total calories, we want to be consuming a minimum of 2,000 calories a day if we're an adult woman and 2,500 calories a day if we're an adult man. Uh, that will ensure that we're able to get enough um, nutrients from our plant-based foods. And your caloric demands go up from there. So those are uh, minimums for sedentary adults. If you're any bit active mentally or physically, if you have children, uh, if, if you have a high metabolism, um, and that can be dictated per your appetite, you need to be consuming enough food per your appetite and at least over the recommended minimums in order to be getting enough nutrients from your plant-based diet. And again, we're minimizing the intake of animal foods, processed foods, refined oils, things like that. So what is um, unique about consuming a high carbohydrate diet in particular is that we use all of our, um, all of our cells require glucose for energy production. So and carbohydrates are the main supplier. Our ability to store carbohydrates is very um, limited and it's extremely hard to do. You have to be consuming over 6,000 calories from carbohydrate foods um, per day as a sedentary person in order to uh, breach your uh, glycogen storage capacity and start spilling over and turning those carbohydrates into fats. Now it is easier to turn carbs into fats when you're coming from a starved or calorie restrictive background, which is why people typically will gain weight when they first adopt a high, car high carbohydrate diet uh, when coming from either calorie restriction or a low carbohydrate diet. So it's nothing to fret about. Your metabolism just needs to play a bit of catch up because what a high carb diet also does is it maximizes our metabolic efficiency by regularly supplying our cells with the energy they need to function at their best. So it's just a little bit about the benefits of a high carbohydrate diet. Again, you wanna, in general, be making sure that the majority of your diet is composed of fruits, vegetables, including non-starchy and starchy vegetables, grains, legumes uh, and beans, as well as um, nuts and seeds if you desire them. So uh, let's get into the next topic. I will go more into detail about each macronutrient group, carbs, proteins, and fats in another video where I'll get into more detail about their roles in the body, as well as sources that you get them from, how much you need um, in particular, etc. But in this video, we're just doing an overview of what you need in order to uh, get into optimal health. So the fourth fundamental 
exercise. We need movement in order to be healthy. Uh, movement brings to the body a lot of things. It, for one, it increases our blood circulation, which enhances oxygen and nutrient uptake into our cells. It also, um, m through movement, our lymphatic system is able to move. And what our lymphatic system does in particular is it acts as our waste management system. So it goes through um, our different lymph uh, dump stations like under our armpits and in our groins and other areas of the body where our body will deposit toxins and excess fat and t um, excess protein deposits which, can, which show up as tumors, uh, excess water retention from excess sodium intake. And that's the one thing I didn't discuss in diet. You want to make sure that your sodium intake is also um, about 1,500 milligrams or less per day because any excess will result in water retention, which can lead to conditions like high blood pressure, edema, and a whole host of other um, metabolic complications. Uh, so getting back into the exercise, though, doing regular exercise helps our lymphatic system dump all of these toxic compounds. So it's normal for the body to accumulate some kind of metabolic waste even when you're consuming 100% plant-based diet. So you still need to be doing exercise. And then for anyone else who's not consuming a 100% plant-based diet for any reason, you need to be doing regular exercise in order to flush out the toxic burden within your body. So that's um, those are some of the major benefits of exercise. Uh, exercise also uh, enhances our metabolism by enhancing our overall um, efficiency. So not only does it increase uptake of oxygen and nutrients to our cells, but it tones our muscles, um, it uh, creates good um, posture and alignment which aids blood flow, um, and increases blood flow to everywhere within our body which can help with um, enhancing uh, rejuvenation of our cells, so helping us to stay looking younger and healthy. And then um, it also uh, aids digestive, digestive function by keeping those organs toned and helping to move things through the system in a um, quick manner. So pretty much exercise doesn't allow any stored toxins or food that's trapped in the gut to remain there. It helps to eliminate it. So you add exercise to the first three fundamentals of getting enough water, sleep, and following a plant-based diet. You enhance your metabolism even that much more through daily movement. So how much do you need? About three hours of moderate intensity activity per week. That can be anything from brisk, jog, uh, brisk walking to jogging, cycling, swimming, playing tennis or other recreational sports like basketball or soccer. Uh, anything that gets you moving, gets your heart rate up and produces a little bit of sweat. You don't have to push it, but you, ha but you do have to move. Uh, other forms of exercise that are really great are any kind of resistance training, uh, lifting weights, doing Pilates, body weight calisthenics, uh, plyometric training, and then you have uh, flexibility exercises like yoga uh, that help to keep the muscles long, lean, and toned, and then of course with resistance exercises you're building strength. So all of exercise, what it does is it enhances the way our body functions, which is one of the um, fundamentals for achieving optimal health. So uh, number five, getting in enough fresh air. So we need to be um, making sure that the air we're breathing isn't completely polluted, which in this day and age is hard to do with the amount of city pollution there is, car exhaust fumes, um, factories that are just dumping chemicals into the atmosphere. What we can do to counter that, um, because oxygen is an essential nutrient for health, we need it for every single cellular process that happens within our body, otherwise we die, uh, is to get out in nature to exercise in nature, to spend time outside, um, away from car exhaust and cities and, well, just do the best you can in terms of that. But being outside in general will allow your body to 
uptake oxygen um, more efficiently because it's got a larger range of where it can get fresh, fresh oxygen from. So indoor living, unfortunately, um, oxygen levels can be a little lower due to stale air, poor ventilation and air circulation, things like that. And one of the uh, benefits of being outside is you're, especially if you're around a lot of green plants, they are releasing fresh oxygen for you to use. Uh, something that you can do also to counter indoor air pollution is to change filters as well as get some indoor house plants, maybe use a uh, filtration system, which uh, whatever uh, sounds best for you. I personally love to have house plants around, especially now it's summertime and like 110 degrees outside. So I'm indoors a lot and those plants, they help me to uh, uh, just breathe in fresher air. So uh, that's the fundamental number five. Last fundamental I'm going to discuss today and the sixth one of our six fundamentals for obtaining optimal health is getting adequate amounts of sunlight on your skin. So what we receive from regular sunlight is vitamin D. Vitamin D is a steroid hormone that, we, that our body produces upon UV light stimulation. And this aids in immune health, bone health, calcium absorption, uh, metabolic health. Uh, pretty, we need vitamin D in order to be healthy. And the best way to get it is through um, direct UV uh, or sunlight exposure. About 10 to 30 minutes a day. Really depends where you live and what the UV level is. For instance, if you live in a, a geographical location where the UV level is like a 10 or, or over, 10 minutes a day uh, full body exposure is going to be sufficient. And then if you're living in a climate where UV exposure is about four to five, uh, 30, 20 to 30 minutes a day should uh, be enough to supply adequate vitamin D to your body. And with just one um, sun exposure like that, you're looking about at about 20 to 30,000 uh, IUs worth of vitamin D, which is more than any kind of supplement can give you. And it's and it gets produced in a healthy way. Unfortunately, with uh, taking too much vitamin D supplements, you can run into um, issues just with the supplement itself, not necessarily the vitamin D. But vitamin D supplementation isn't a bad idea, especially if uh, you live in a geographical location where you're not able to get uh, adequate sunlight year round, you can always supplement. So that's it for the six fundamentals for optimal health. Something to keep in mind is that um, practicing these fundamentals is kind of like riding a bicycle. You have to get used to it and then it becomes easy, effortless, and uh, something that you can, it becomes second nature. Um, I've personally experienced this and have reaped the benefits of it, but it did take me a few months and years in order to get things down to start receiving the metabolic and health results. But it has a cumulative effect. More you can practice proper um, diet and lifestyle habits, the more benefits you're going to get from them. So follow these six fundamentals for optimal health to achieve and maintain that uh, for the rest of your life. Thank you so much for watching. Give this video a like if you found it informational um, and interesting. Post any comments or questions down below. I will leave a link in the description of this video for a link to my blog post that I wrote about the six fundamentals. It goes into a little bit more detail, so you can always check that out. Um, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already, and have a wonderful, healthy day. Bye.